Hi, Jim Rogers with a quick video this time and I wanted to talk to you about your Morris tapers. The tapers that are in the headstock and the tailstock of your lathe into which components fit either to drive or to hold. One of the biggest problems we have with our lathes is those tapers get very dirty and if they're dirty and debris accumulates inside of there, which it does, First thing may happen is things will not stick in the taper. A uh, drive center may not work. It may slip. Or you put something in and then you can't get it out because it's wedged in with debris. So those tapers have to be kept clean. Well, for the longest time, we had these green taper cleaners that were readily available. You could stick them into the taper, give it a couple of twists, and things cleaned out really nice. Problem is, these are not available on the market anymore. They're gone. So what are we going to do? We have to do something. My finger is not a good way. Q-tips won't do it. So we're going to have to have some way of cleaning those tapers. So I started looking around to see what the options were. One of the things I found on the net was a file that allowed me to download uh, th to my 3D printer a taper cleaner, Morris taper cleaner, and I printed it. Yeah, it works. It's fine. I created one of my own, my own file. This one's different because it has six protrusions on it and spaces between them, and that means that when I'm turning this inside the taper, there's a place for the debris to be removed too without being compressed into it. Cheapest way of taking care of the problem? Buy one. Difficulty there. You'll have to search the internet pretty carefully, but you will find one particular one on the market. It's not inexpensive, and the shipping on top of it is even more. I believe the one I have on order right now, which looks like this one up here, uh, is about 40 bucks. That's too much money. We should have one, and I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes how I made one uh, out of, this is Doug fir. I wanted to use a soft, flexible, inexpensive wood. And I'm going to go to the lathe and show you how to make this thing in about five minutes. Um, if it gets used and lost, it's no big deal. You can make another one in another five minutes. So being able to come in here and clean this taper with something soft that will conform and get the debris out is really important. If not, one of the things that may happen over a period of time is the inside of that taper gets abraded. And you may be forced to do something much more drastic. Here's a set of taper reamers. Coarse and fine. Uh, I suggest that we probably should never need to have one of the coarse reamers. But the fine reamers, I keep one in my desk drawer at school because from time to time I have to go inside one of these tapers and remove uh, debris or abrasions in there. Uh, never drive this with the lathe. I'm going to push this in, a little bit of pressure. It's a square in, a box wrench on the end of this to turn it will be easily used to remove any debris in there. Uh, this set cost me about 40 bucks. Uh, I suggest that you do not need one but you need to know someone who has one. Uh, one in the, in the club or in your group would be more than sufficient, and one of the uh, smooth or finishing reamers would be more than adequate. I hope you never need that. But since I have a number of lathes working at our school, it's important that I have an ability to take care of those problems which do from time to time occur. Well, let me go to the lathe. And I'm going to turn one of these uh, very quickly. And I'm going to just take the measurements off of a given taper. This dimension from here to here, this length is very specific. This diameter at the fattest and at the thinnest at the bottom end are very specific. If I turn from the smaller, from the larger to the smaller diameter within that distance, I'm going to have almost a perfect taper. Uh, I'll test it by uh, running it inside of another taper and looking for burnish marks and maybe completing the, the um, turning with just a little bit of sanding. Take the spur drive or the live center from your lathe out 
and use it as a template as I'm going to do in this uh, short video. I hope this helps. Be sure you have one of these at hand. See you at the lathe. Well, I actually didn't start right at the lathe. I really started at the bandsaw. I've got a piece of 2x4, and I'm just cutting off a short piece, and I know the maximum diameter is going to be um, approximately 3 quarters of an inch. So I'm going to cut a piece of 2x4, Douglas fir in this case, to be approximately 1 inch square. So I've ripped off a piece that's long enough, and I'm cutting a piece just about 1 inch square. So uh, you can use any lumber you want. I really am choosing to use a softer wood for two reasons. Number one, I want it to be able to conform to the inside of the paper. So I want it soft enough that it will grab hold. Secondly, uh, everybody's got a piece of you know, some kind of soft wood around. Poplar perhaps, uh, a dug fir or um, pine, whatever. Anyway, there's the piece I'm going to start with. I'm just going to mark the centers on it and go to the lathe and lay out uh, what it's going to look like. So I'm using a drive that has a Morris taper on it. The taper is laid out to two and nine sixteenths inches, just copied it off of the taper itself. The rest of the wood here is going to be part of the handle and uh, a little bit to trim off at the very end. So now, transferring dimensions, the easiest way to do it is just to take that taper and transfer. I've taken the largest of the diameters, and I'm going to turn the taper end of it down to approximately that dimension, maybe a little bit uh, large on the large side. Uh, after I get it down round and to something approximate, I'll use uh, a parting tool and the calipers to take that down to exactly that particular dimension. So, uh, simple turning, a little spindle work. This could have been done with a roughing gouge, uh, a bowl gouge, practically any tool. Could have done the whole thing with this skew chisel, I suppose. So I'm just roughing it out. And this is the working end down here, so I'm going to take it down to uh, approximately 3 quarters of an inch. Now I've got my two wrist set square across right now to allow me to turn at a constant diameter from one end to the other. I use the two wrists as a guide for my fingers to allow me to hold that tool in a constant position. So I'm just roughly there. So now it's time to measure off the length, find out where the end of that taper is again. It's so right there. Mark that off. And now I'm going to go in at that point and set it to the largest of the two diameters of the Morris taper number two. Once that's done, now I'm going to take the smaller end and I'm going to mark it right at the very end of this piece. And it's going to be a hole in the end of it from the lights on the diamond cutter. So I'm going to mark the very end of it down to that smaller diameter. You got it. So now that that's down to diameter, and I've set my tool rest at an angle, now all I need to do is to turn from one of those marks to the other as close as I can get. Uh, you can use any tool. I'm going to choose to use my uh, skew chisel uh, to come down. And once that's turned down to roughly that dimension, uh, I'll have to perfect it because I need to get it as close as I can. And you'll see the way I do it with the piece of uh, 120 grit sandpaper. So we pull it down to roughly the dimensions. You could all do all this with a spindle rubbing gauge just as easily. Okay, that's rough. So now let's 
do a little bit of sanding. And the purpose of the sanding is not only to get it smooth, but I'm really blending some of my rough cuts a little bit with that uh, sandpaper. And I'm just using 180. You could use 120, even 80 grit if you want to. I happen to have a Morris Taper II extension, which made something easy for me to grab hold of and uh, use. So I'm inserting it into the extension, and I'm looking for rub marks because the rub marks will be the places where uh, it's a little bit too large. So I've rubbed it. I found a spot on there which is uh, larger than it should be, and I'm putting it back on the lathe between centers and simply sanding that mark down, uh, taking the wood down that much. I'm very close, so I don't need much adjustment. Now, you may have to do this several times. I had to do it three or four times in order to get it as close to that taper as I wanted. So that was the first time. And now you see it's going in much farther, and the rub mark is going to be in a different location, you know, way up at the top this time. So it's a matter of just putting it back between centers, bringing up that piece of uh, 120 grit sandpaper, and sanding that down until that rub mark is gone, and then testing. So it's a little sand, little test, little sand, little test. Since I'm using something very soft, I can twist it in the Morris taper and get a very clear uh, rub mark. Uh, if it's hard to see, you can always put a pencil on. Well, look right there. That's, that's about as close as I need to get. There's a little bit of a rub mark right at the very top, uh, and I'm going to get to that later on, but that's close enough now. So I'm going to work on the opposite end uh, after just a touch of sanding. That's what I'm looking for. This is the case, there's a rub mark right in the center. You can see it very clearly. We'll touch that up. And go on and fashion some sort of a handle for the other end. Handle's not very critical, but I've extended long enough, maybe an extra three, three and a half inches to give me something to grab hold of. I'm using a very small drive center. It's a spur drive that is uh, unusually small with very sharp points. So I went to the bandsaw and sawed an X pattern right through the mark on the end to allow that center to set down into the wood without splitting it. And that'll all get cut off at the very end when we round over the end of the handle. So we're just doing a little handle shaping. Uh, I'm not gonna put any finish on it. This is the kind of piece that if I get it lost, I've got more 2x4 laying around to make another one. I want to round this end off, and the bowl gouge is not the best tool for that, so we've gone back to a shallow food gouge, and I'm just going to round that off after it's partially rounded, cut it off with a parting tool, finish it off by hand, and call it back. So that's just about it. I'm not sure I even needed to have cleaned this up. If you want to get fancy, you can do some things to the handle to uh, make it more attractive and make it more yours. But I just was going to try to do this in five minutes or less, so I didn't want to mess with it too much. 
And to get that wood off of the very end, I'm just gonna take a box cutter, trim it down a little bit, and off camera, I'll hit it with a little bit of sandpaper to round it up. So, tested in my uh, Morris Taper extension. It works just fine. Um, it's nothing very fancy about it at all, but it does the job. And it's something that you should add to your toolbox to keep those tapers clean in your lathe and all the parts plugged together properly. Hope you'll take up the idea. Make yourself a taper cleaner. Thanks.